you know about the power rule, right? You know the power rule tells you how to differentiate uh, x to the n, right? The derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1, but y, right? Why is that the derivative of x to the n? So I'm going to give an argument now as to why the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. And to do this, we're going to need the definition of derivative. So let's, uh, let's set up our function f of x. Now f of x will be x to the n for n some positive integer, like 17. Right? And I want to calculate, say, the derivative of this function at the point a. And the definition of derivative says that the derivative of the function at the point a is just the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Why is that the definition of derivative, right? Well, it's the definition of derivative because it's recording how the input wiggling, x minus a, is affecting the output wiggling, f of x minus f of a. And that ratio of output wiggling to input wiggling is what the derivative is measuring, right? It's how the input changes the output. So this is, this is the definition of derivative at the point a. Now, I want to know what that is for the function x to the n. So I'm going to plug in the function x to the n, and the limit that I have to calculate the limit as x goes to a of the function x to the n minus a to the n over x minus a. How do I calculate that limit? The numerator, x to the n minus a to the n factors. Right? And you've seen some examples of this before. So something like x squared minus a squared, how does that factor? Well, it's a difference of squares. It factors as x minus a times x plus a. In general, x to the n minus a to the n factors as x minus a times what? Well, it'll be an x to the n minus 1 term, because x times x to the n minus 1 will produce this x to the n. But it's also going to produce a minus a x to the n minus 1 term. So I'm going to add and include an x to the n minus 2 a term, because x times x to the n minus 2 times a will cancel the minus a x to the n minus 1 term. And it keeps on going like that. So there'll be an x to the n minus 3 a squared term, and it'll keep on going until it ends with an x to the a, an a to the n minus 1 term. Right. So this is how x to the n minus a to the n factors. And it's worth pointing out that there are n terms here. Right. If you like, this is the 0th term, the 1st term, and it ends with the n minus 1th term. Right, and if you count, I, I'm writing down the exponent on the a to the n. Right? There's a zero, this is a to the 0, this is a to the 1, this is a to the 2, and it ends with an a to the n minus 1. Well, how many things are there if you start counting from 0 and you end at n minus 1? There's, there's n of those things. So there's n terms in, in this product. That, that'll be important later. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to include this factorization when I calculate this limit. And so this, this limit is now the limit as x to the a of x minus a times x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2a. And then it ends with an a to the n minus 1. I mean, there's you know, lots of terms in between. And that's how the numerator, x to the n minus a to the n factors, the denominator is just x minus a. Now this is the limit as x goes to a. And I've got an x minus a factor in the numerator, an x minus a factor in the denominator, so I can cancel those common factors. And what I'm left with is the limit of x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2a all the way down to a to the n minus 1. This is the limit till as x goes to a. Now, what is that limit? Well, it's a limit of a sum. Right? And the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. So this is the same as the limit of x to the n minus 1 which is a to the n minus 1. The limit of x to the n minus 2a, which is a to the n minus 1. And in fact, all of the terms are a to the n minus 1 in, in the limit. And it ends with a to the n minus 1. It's also in the limit just a to the n minus 1. right? So every single term along the way is a to the n minus 1. So I've got uh, n terms, all of which are a to the n minus 1. And yeah, there's n of them, so the product, the sum, is just n a to the n minus 1. And this really is, then, what the derivative of this function is, right?
because I took the function, plugged it in to the definition and derivative, got the limit that I have to calculate, the limit of the difference quotient. I calculated that limit by factoring the numerator and canceling an x minus a. I counted these terms, and the limit of every single one of these terms is a to the n minus 1. I've got n copies of a to the n minus 1 added together. Well, that's just n times a to the n minus 1. So this is a calculation of the derivative of this function. It's n a to the n minus 1 at the point a.